Um, cool. So my name is Chris. I'm a research scientist at Reality Labs Research, and I'll be presenting uh, this data set called Aria Synthetic Environments. Uh, short. Uh, it's ACE for short. So what is ACE? Uh, this is a large-scale synthetic data set uh, consisting of 100,000 unique procedurally generated interior scenes. So to our knowledge, this is the largest indoor data set to date, or that's currently available. Uh, so we're setting a new precedent for scale uh, for these data sets. And this little video here basically shows you uh, some of the diversity of the scenes that we've generated. Furthermore, we're also providing uh, a full set of annotations with each of these scenes to facilitate egocentric machine perception research. Why create another one of these indoor data sets? I did mention there's already a few out there. Um, well, these data sets typically fall short for you know, a few different reasons. For example, we have this data set, Structured 3D. Uh, it provides um, professionally designed 3D layouts, uh, which is very nice, high quality. It comes with stuff like semantic labels and a bunch of goodies, but there's only 3,500 scenes, right? It's, it's a bit small. Then we have Proctor uh, from AI2, uh, and they have 10,000 scenes, but these scenes, uh, which very similar to ours are procedurally generated, this is meant for embodied AI. Um, so they don't provide egocentric trajectories, renderings of each scene, et cetera. So can't quite use that one either. Then we've got Sun CG. This one's a bit older, uh, but it's a bit larger too. It's got uh, 45,000 scenes. Um, but the annotations in this data set are lacking. There is only uh, depth maps and volumetric ground truth, which doesn't exactly enable um, all the research that we would like to facilitate. And it's not available at the moment due to some legal issues. Um, so can't use that one either. Uh, then we've got the Zillow Indoor data set. And this data set, unlike the rest of them, is a real data set, real world, collected by uh, basically collecting um, panoramic images, uh, a sparse set of panoramic images at each house and stitching together that floor plan. But this one is very small. It's 2,500 scenes. Again, it does not provide egocentric trajectories, so it doesn't allow for uh, a full evaluation uh, for egocentric machine perception. So uh, these data sets, they kind of lack in one dimension or another, but most of them in general are just a bit small. And as we've seen in recent research, like ChatGPT, GPT-4, or your favorite LLM, large data sets are really enabling remarkable gains in machine learning. So here's just a table that uh, compares uh, ACE at the top row there um, to the data sets I mentioned before and a bunch of other data sets. And so not only is ACE the largest indoor data set currently available, um, it also provides egocentric trajectories. It provides photorealistic image renderings. It provides depth maps for each of those images, segmentation maps, and it also provides ground truth layout. So only a few of the data sets uh, focus on ground truth layout, which is a fundamental problem when it comes to scene understanding. With all these uh, annotations, uh, researchers like you guys can use it to uh, study problems like pose estimation or regression, uh, layout reconstruction, scene understanding, all from an egocentric perspective. Additionally, because ARIA Synthetic Datasets is an ARIA dataset, it includes some of the outputs of our pretty cool machine perception services that you've heard about um, in the, uh, before. Uh, so for example, each scene comes with a semi-dense point cloud representation. So I'd like to highlight one kind of cool advantage uh, with this data set, um, which is that there's a real-world component to it. Um, you've heard about our ARIA program, our ARIA partner program uh, from Prince. And because of that, or thanks to that, um, our academic partners can get access to ARIA devices and the machine perception services uh, for free, <laughs> um, I think. Uh, <laughs> so that means any model that you train on this data set can then be deployed on an on-device uh, super awesome demo. And uh, we are really excited to see what you guys end up uh, doing with this data set. We're highly encouraging researchers who have uh, ARIA already or are signing up to get ARIA to please check out the data set um, and train some models, do some cool stuff. OK, um, so let's take a look at the data set. What does, this, uh, what does it contain? So as I mentioned, there are 100,000 unique multi-room scenes. As you can see, there's a small snippet here. Uh, each of these scenes are populated with 3D objects uh, from the Amazon Berkeley data set, which was released in last year's CVPR. So we've got some household objects uh, in there if you look really, really closely. For each of these scenes, 
Uh, we simulate an agent walking around the entire scene, and then we render sensor data from uh, Project ARIA rig um, at a 10 hertz frame rate. Uh, so here I'm just showing uh, the uh, RGB stream of the simulated agent walking around the house. We also simulate IMUs, uh, slam cameras, et cetera. Because we have uh, this simulated ARIA recording, we can then plug it through our machine perception services pipeline and get stuff like semi-dense point cloud representations. We also, as I mentioned, provide uh, ground truth annotations. Uh, it's a simulated data set, so we, also, we have the ground truth uh, six off poses of the trajectory, so that can facilitate pose estimation, pose regression research. We've got 2D instant segmentations on the right there uh, to facilitate segmentation research. Uh, we've got 2D depth maps, so you can study problems like video depth estimation or even monocular depth estimation. And then we also have the floor plan in what I'm saying is a CAD-like language, and Ed has already alluded to what this is. So let's take a moment and dive into that a little bit. So in this slide, I'd like to highlight this representation. Um, our data set ACE is providing the ground truth layout in this textual representation that has these procedural commands like make wall, make door, and make window. It's kind of like a CAD-like thing, right? And this format contains all the parameters necessary to recover the geometric entities that you see here on the left, the walls, the doors, the windows. So most architectural layout estimation methods, they typically estimate directly predict the geometric representations. For example, they'll predict the corners, uh, the edges, and try and connect them into a wireframe or something like that. But this formatting suggests that there are, there are alternative methods to uh, produce floor plan uh, layouts. Uh, and this is exactly one of our intended goals. By releasing the ground truth in this format, we're encouraging researchers like you guys to investigate prediction of the scene geometry in this text-based format. Um, and the, the challenge that Ed mentioned uh, is uh, we'll also further encourage this. I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. All right, um, so some statistics uh, that's always fun to look at uh, for the data set. There are 100,000 scenes, as I've said, probably for the third or fourth time. Um, and in each of these scenes, I mentioned that we uh, are simulating an agent walking around. So some fun facts about these trajectories. Uh, there are 58 million images in this entire data set. Um, there are the, the agents, the simulated agents, are walking around for approximately 67 days. Um, it's a long time to walk. And the total distance walked by these trajectories, or these simulated agents, is about 7,800 kilometers, which is roughly the distance between London to San Francisco. Um, yeah, that's fun. Um, each scene has up to five complex shaped rooms, all of which have a Manhattan world assumption, which means that the walls connect at a 90 degree angle. And as mentioned, this is a very large data set. It's approximately 23 terabytes uh, when it's compressed. So hopefully you have a, well that's actually pretty small for a, a beefy um, hard drive, right? Uh, just a quick overview of how this data set was generated. Uh, there's three phases. The first is we procedurally generate floor plans. So here, what I'm showing is essentially um, uh, the floor plans plotted, in, uh, and you can see the rooms, they're connected, et cetera. Um, then we take those, extrude them into 3D, uh, and we populate them with objects from the Amazon Berkeley data set that I had mentioned. Here's a top-down render of a single room of one of these scenes. So you can see you've got some beds and couches, uh, lamps hanging from the ceiling, pictures on the wall, et, uh, et cetera. So they're all a bunch of household objects. Once we have these scenes, we simulate those trajectories. And so on this image here, we see the blue line there shows the trajectory of the agent walking around. And then from that simulated ARIA recording, we can pass it through the machine perception services to get say, dense point clouds. And you've seen a bunch of them already this talk, but here's yet another interesting visualization of those semi-dense points reprojected back into this particular image. Just a slightly uh, deeper dive, uh, that first um, phase, floor plan generation, is a procedural uh, generation. Uh, we design heuristics that basically say uh, add one room after another, and we have some constraints like they need to be uh, connected, they can't be overlapping, etc. We also randomly place uh, doors and windows, which you can see on the external walls with these cyan, or I guess from here it looks a bit teal, um, and orange little little lines there. Then if you extrude that thing into 3D 
uh, and then you cut out uh, holes for the doors and the windows, you get a little mesh that looks something like this. So with that thing, we want to fill that um, with these objects. Again, from the Amazon Berkeley dataset, there are about 8,000 meshes there, all household objects, which is very fantastic because we are simulating houses. Um, and we populate these objects in a semantically plausible fashion. So we again designed heuristics that basically say stuff like the bed should be placed against the wall because you will rarely ever see a bedroom where the bed is in the middle of the room. Uh, chairs and tables, for example, are not placed against the wall. They're kind of in the middle of the room. Uh, so here we just have a few top-down renders of some of those houses. And the last and final piece, um, here we're seeing basically another visualization of um, those agents walking around. And these trajectories are uh, simulated with more heuristics again that basically say we need to visit each room sufficiently. Uh, we then sensor, uh, simulate the ARIA sensor data, uh, including images like you see in the middle here, uh, at a 10 hertz frame rate and then we can plug that into machine perception. And here's yet another uh, visualization of those semi-dense points, this time from a top-down render. And the, the more yellow pieces are where there's more cluster of points, looking from a bird's eye view. We will be releasing a white paper in the following weeks, which will have a lot more information about how the data was generated and data set statistics and whatnot. So please stay tuned for that. Cool, um, so I've just covered you know, what exactly ACE is, what it's got. Uh, we're also providing some software tools to get researchers up and running really, really quickly with this data. So one of the first things we provided is a very, very simple download script. Once you sign the agreement uh, and you get access to the data, you just have to run the single command uh, to download either a couple of scenes or the entire data set. Up to you. We've got some really nice loading visualization tools. We've seen some uh, in, from VJ. That's really nice. This one is a slightly different set. Um, but all of them run in Jupyter Notebooks and are very, very lightweight. Uh, so you can get up and running very, very fast. Um, we've got code to read dataset files, like the point clouds, the trajectories, et cetera. We've got interpreters to reconstruct those uh, geometric elements, the walls, the doors, the windows, from that CAD-like language. And we also have visualizers uh, in 3D. Uh, we also have projection tools uh, using uh, ARIA camera intrinsics to either reproject points into the scene or even cast rays into the scene. So all of this is, it runs on Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, so once you download some of the data, you should be able to get up and running very, very fast. Uh, as I mentioned here, it, it's very simple. Um, you can easily get started. We also have a visualization uh, in Plotly where you can look at all modalities in one go. Um, <clears throat> again, all of this runs in Jupyter Notebook, so should be very low friction, and hopefully you can just use the code, plug into your data loaders, and get those models training like tomorrow. Yeah, and the projection tools. Uh, here are some semi-dense point clouds back projected into those simulated ARIA images. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, you can also use those tools to cast rays into the scene in case you're interested in doing NERF-style volumetric rendering research. So uh, there will be a white paper coming out very, very soon uh, in the coming weeks that will detail all of this uh, information, much, uh, or much, much more details for that. Um, so please stay tuned for updates at projectaria.com forward slash newsletter. Last but not least, uh, Ed alluded to this, that we're hosting a scene reconstruction challenge with this data set. So the task is, given an ARIA sequence, like we were seeing here, uh, output a language description of the scene. So this is the layout, and in particular, we're looking at wall stores and windows that you can kind of see here, back projected onto the image. But the key point here is the language description. So this is what I showed a few slides ago, that text-based representation. Uh, the goal of this challenge is really to encourage researchers like you guys to tackle estimation of layout uh, using these text-based representations. We think this is a really cool avenue of research going forward. We hope you're very interested in participating in this challenge. We're very excited to see what kinds of uh, things you can do uh, to, to make this work. Uh, and of course, to really get you uh, interested in this challenge, there's a prize, there's some prize money, $10,000 USD. Uh, the results will be announced at BMVC later this year, just, with, just like the ADT challenges. Uh, the challenge will go live very, very soon, in a couple of weeks. So again, please stay tuned for updates. You can find uh, ACE uh, on the projectaria.com website. Uh, so please check it out. Cool, thanks a lot. And I think I'm handing it off to Raul. <laughs>